So thanks, thanks again for having me. My name is Jeff Herbst. I'm the uh, head of corporate business development for NVIDIA. I've been doing this job for about 15 years, and uh, this is really exciting times for us. But I'm, I'm not going to make any assumptions uh, from the audience today, but I assume everybody's heard from NVIDIA, uh, about NVIDIA or knows NVIDIA. Anybody here not know NVIDIA? Uh, let me just give you a couple of quick facts about us. Um, we're about 70 billion of uh, market cap right now, traded on NASDAQ. We did about 7 billion of revenue in our last uh, fiscal year, about 10,000 employees. I think we were the fastest growing uh, company in the S&P 500, if not the, uh, one of the several fastest, and certainly among large market cap companies. Uh, we're just having an astounding growth rate. Second question, and, and, and please feel free to raise your hand. Anybody not know what a GPU is? Okay, that's fair. So uh, a GPU is a graphics processing unit, and um, the, the topic of my uh, discussion is why the age of GPUs is upon us. And in the early days, these things used to be called VGA controllers. They, they sold for $3, $5. Now we sell GPUs for well over $1,000. And basically, they were designed to do the computer graphics in your personal computer. And so now I'm gonna tell you why the age of GPUs is upon us. And before I do that, let's see. Before I do that, let me just tell you, I'm not making this up. Uh, I'm not the only person saying it. We have a lot of validation right now, and I kind of love these, uh, these quotes that we get. And uh, it's Kramer on CNBC. And by the way, th those of you who, who watch CNBC, they used to call us NVIDIA. They didn't even know how to pronounce the name of our company. And, and I think they do now. And uh, you know what's, what's, what's fantastic for us that work at the company is we see this great apocalypse coming, and we see all this great technology being used for AI. And I think only a small fraction of the, the population understands it now. And even, even the tech community, I think there are um, a lot of people that don't. So, so the question is, and I get, get asked this all the time, you know, Jeff, you know, you guys are a PC gaming company. What the heck does Counter-Strike have to do with autonomous driving? Uh, you know, what does Grand Theft Auto have to do with Google Brain? Well, I'm going to tell you the story right now, and it's, it's actually pretty interesting. And sometimes people ask me this in a nice way. Sometimes they ask me in a not-so-nice way. But they, they basically imply, well, NVIDIA is just a very lucky company. You guys built something for gamers, and now you're the leading company for AI. How the heck did that happen? And I've had this conversation with you know, technologists, uh, as well as many journalists. Recently, The Marker in Israel. I think I was sitting with Reuters earlier this week. But I'm going to try to walk you through the story. Um, and bear with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to do it a little bit uh, slowly. And if I get too technical, please let me know. This is the public history of NVIDIA. I'm not going to go back to 1993 when the company was started. But as I, as I said, we were started as, as basically a consumer 3D graphics company, making graphics cards for PCs. And back when we started, this is this era right here, there were probably, gosh, 50 companies trying to make 3D graphics chips. And NVIDIA survived this era, and we went public in 1999. Just in case you're wondering, I joined the company right about here, about 2001. And this was right about the time that NVIDIA decided to make our chips programmable. So previously, our graphics chips were massively parallel processors with a lot of horsepower on them. But we decided that uh, game developers and professional designers needed a bigger palette of things that they can do with a graphics processor. Let me give you an example. If you want to create an effect like fire, flowing water, smoke, it's very difficult to do, or was very difficult to do, with a fixed function graphics processor where you could slap a color or a texture or just a basic label on something. So we did, around 2001, we introduced programmable graphics processors. We coined the name graphics processing units. Once we did this, this actually unleashed a host of development, and most of it coming from the academic community. And these folks in the academic community now saw the GPU as basically a supercomputer in a box. So getting supercomputer time at universities to do simulations, you know, electromagnetic, seismic, atmospheric, this was very expensive. So once we did this, those folks in the universities had a way to, to start developing things that had nothing to do with graphics, had nothing to do with visual computing. And so the GPU became 
a processor for non-graphics applications. This was the start. We recognized this, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, ruin, I'm ruining my slides. We recognized this early on, and what we did was we started building tools for these researchers and scientists, and over the next several, several years, it culminated in what we called CUDA, which was a GPU computing language. So basically, we started as a gaming company, Counter-Strike, Grand Theft Auto, built tools for people to use graphics processors for non-graphics applications. It's called CUDA. Around 2007 or 2008, we basically ushered in the era of what we call GPU computing. We took our graphics chips, which used to be used for gaming, and which were gamers were still buying, and we invested super heavily in these non-graphics applications. Quite frankly, if you look at kind of our stock price and what happened to us, it almost killed the company. It was a huge investment in the future. Why did we do this? Because we saw the future. We didn't, we didn't necessarily knew, know that deep learning was gonna be the killer app for GPUs, but we knew we needed a platform, a massively parallel platform for people to develop high performance computing applications of which deep learning became one of the, one of the biggest and will continue to become the biggest. So fast forward another four or five years. Stanford University, the Olympics of image recognition, it's called ImageNet. They, they hold a contest for academics and others to try to do image recognition with the highest accuracy. All of a sudden, about 2011 and 2012, people recognized that the GPU computing platform and CUDA, which NVIDIA built, could basically drive a deep neural network that could produce accuracy for image recognition much faster than any any coding, single line coding of uh, computer vision could do. Boom, big bang happens. These researchers and academics start winning the contest. Word gets out. Uh, University of Toronto, um, uh, Andrew Ng from Baidu, um, Jan LeCun, all these academics figure out, wait a minute, all this artificial intelligence theory and technology that's been sitting around for 30 or 40 years can finally be unleashed on this amazing platform that's been created by NVIDIA. Boom, these folks end up going to Baidu, Facebook, Google, Netflix, start building artificial intelligence programs focused on image recognition, voice recognition, Siri, Cortana. The world starts to explode. And what's happening at the same time? The same time all this is happening is CPU performance is flatlining. So I think Intel will even agree with this chart. Essentially, Moore's law, and by the way, you can, you can NVIDIA is part of the semiconductor classification on the NASDAQ, but don't think of us as a semiconductor company. I'm gonna give you just a basic primer in this. But basically, Moore's law said every time you double the number of transistors on a chip, performance should double with it, and that should happen about 18 months. If you look at this chart, that kind of stopped happening around 2010, 2011, just about the same time that folks were recognizing that GPUs were a processor of choice for deep learning. So boom, these two things happen all at the same time, and I'm not gonna go through all these slides, but here's the evidence. All of a sudden, people start downloading NVIDIA's frameworks for deep learning. The attendance at our, our GPU technology conference starts to go up massively, and this year it will probably pass that of uh, IDF. Startups, large companies start developing applications on top of GPUs. And now where we find ourselves is that GPUs basically are showing the future for deep learning, and basically we've unleashed this massive industry that's gonna continue to, to, to grow and thrive. I'm about out of time. I'm gonna flow through. If anyone wants to talk to me later, I'm happy to do that but I'm just gonna give you one little tidbit at the end, and that's just a little bit about what we're doing. What, why am I here? I'm basically looking for startups that are developing deep, lear deep learning applications on the NVIDIA platform, and quite frankly, 90% of startups that we see doing deep learning are using GPUs, as well as all of the big companies. But if you are a startup and you'd like to work with us, I'm happy to talk to you. Not only are we trying to help you guys, give you uh, developer support, we're also investing. This is something I haven't disclosed in public to date, but the, the, the companies in the yellow um, um, outline are the deep learning companies that we funded, many of these in the last year, and you'll see some pretty, pretty big names there. And uh, finally, we're very interested in Israel. Um, I'm spending a lot of time there. We have an R&D center in Israel. We've made two venture investments there. 
Uh, we've already had a successful exit in a company called Rocketic that was doing GPU computing. Uh, we're looking to expand and invest. And I'm sorry to give you guys a little bit more technical uh, overview, but I think understanding why, why GPUs have arisen as a platform of choice for deep learning was my goal. Hopefully, I've, I've accomplished this, and uh, I look forward to uh, speaking with some of you later. Thank you very much.